I think the filmic opportunity really can speak to a lot of that kind of theoretical work which might look very didactic on a 2D <laughs> drawn model or the words that I try and use. The best short films for lifelong learning recommended by teachers for teachers. This is Short Films Teachers Love with your host, Richard Lee. So you're still involved with Mara even while you're um, where you are now? Mm. I am. I'm still the program director and a research fellow at Melbourne Business School, but uh, yes, I'm based at Charles State University as an associate professor in leadership and uh, it's great. It's great to continue that that um, involvement and to, to think about, you know, what's happening in the Indigenous business sector because um, even though a lot of people would think the Indigenous se business sector is a lot of the arts and cultural entrepreneurs, um, that is a strong section, but it's certainly not the majority. Uh, Aboriginal business people are in every industry and uh, it's just been... Um, so eye-opening really I was kind of blown away teaching this kind of Murra program with all these entrepreneurs and and they would start doing business with each other from the first class so I was like wow okay that again I just didn't have the foresight to kind of think this would happen I mean you know I'm I work in culture so I'm all about oh let's dream a big kind of cool project up or something like that which yeah, that's just what I do. Um, I like to, to do those sort of social change programs. So it's been an education, Richard. Yeah, fantastic. Well, and that's that's where I, I guess I step in. And I often go into, you know, different interviews that I have with people. I go in knowing that they've, you know, had a, a large experience with films. Um, you, I had no idea, but I knew you had an arts background. So, um, but it doesn't look like you do use a lot of short films in your teaching. And yet I know that they, short films do have a place in your life. So let me explore that a little bit. Let me start by asking you about one of the films you've recommended. And this is from a collection called From Sand to Celluloid, which is a great recommendation in itself because that's a DVD which has six short films, Indigenous films, uh, and the one that you've chosen from that is called Two Bob Mermaid. Oh, OK, let's try. Yeah. Uh, um, this is Eleanor. She just moved Hi. here. Hi. Hey, Tita. No matter what you do for them, they still act like a bunch of monkeys. It's an awesome film. I like it because of um, the sort of um, skin colour politics, certainly at the centre of it, um, of a young um, girl or a young lady really having to deal with the politics of Aboriginality um, within a very kind of... Um, segregated part of Australian history. And this was the time um, where it was set around the Freedom Rides with Charlie Perkins, um, literally going to places like this swimming pool in Moree and, um, you know, having a lot of Aboriginal people jump in and, uh, you know, disrupt the norm or the, the kind of control that the white majority in the town or majority uh, was trying to enforce about places where Aboriginal people could be and couldn't be. But the thing that I like um, that relates to my teaching is I'm, I'm interested in the leadership work that individuals have to do inside of themselves even before they do acts of leadership. So we have to, um, and that's a lot of my kind of theoretical work, is what do we need to navigate inside of ourselves? And so this young girl, we watch her kind of working through, do I um, pass as um, white to get access and also get to play with my other non-Aboriginal friends um, or, you know, and she's she's shamed up by her Aboriginal family who see her doing this. Um, she's You can see her having sort of um, these um, magical reality dreams about being a mermaid from the films at that time and, and kind of, you know, that talks to all of us about um, when we were young, thinking about, you know, what we would love to do and, and, and kind of slipping into that fantasy mode of what was possible or what's not possible perhaps. And uh, 
you know, and it explores all of that. And I think, you know, the filmic uh, opportunity is is to re- really can speak to a lot of that kind of theoretical work, which might look very didactic on a 2D <laughs> drawn model uh, as best I can to explain it or the words that I try and use. People immediately think about the hero who has the vision, who has all the ideas. We're thinking of leadership as something that doesn't belong to a particular individual. Leadership is something that is collective. It belongs to a group of people. Finally, in grade nine, after an emergency foster care placement, I stood before a judge with a social worker and a lawyer by my side, and the judge said, Nick, we're going to take you from the custody of your father, and we're going to offer you another opportunity. The other opportunity that I was afforded was to go to a place called the Milton Hershey School. I think why I like to use clips like that, um, certainly Sonia's one is they are reading Sonia. And so one of the things that I found when I was a PhD student in particular is, you know, you're reading all these amazing theorists and you're going, oh, man, this is what I think, and um, but they're on these pedestals away and you don't know who they are or what they look like. And I want them to see her talking about her ideas, not just reading them and interpreting them and being very academic and intellectual with the text. I want, I want a lot of the work of leadership is in the talk, in the way we talk, in the way we frame things. And Nick Nisley is another, you know, interesting cat. I love that that film. It's one of my absolute favourites. Nick's great. I've, so I've known him um, and I love his story. I mean, he's a, he's a, a foster kid, a kid in the kind of orphanage system, and he talks about that. So he weaves his life story into it, which is really one of the big key teaching points that I talk about with leadership, how we need to lead from our life stories. Okay, now the last the last clip you've recommended, Quanda, Q&A, um, which is a, a national program. And this was an episode that they ran from Arnhem Land up in Northern Territory. Yeah. I'm no leader, but... <laughs> <laughs> People are laughing at that. I think, you, I think you probably are, whether you know it or not. If you say so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She is right. Um, as Indigenous young people, we are not, we, are, we don't <coughs> complain, oh, sorry, claim ourselves as leaders because um, we are chosen. Um, yeah. The whole thing about leadership is it's not about the person. It's about how the pers- uh, a person can emerge as a leader if they're granted and if they claim that leadership kind of frame, but more importantly, that they're collectively endorsed and mutually endorsed as the leader. So we, we see all of that happening there and it really talks to one of the kind of key theories in leadership that I really like about this kind of three different parts of of the leadership, uh, how leadership can emerge, which is the act of um, claiming that space. So I've got to be willing to claim my own self as a leader, but that's not enough. I need to be granted. So people might say, you're, you're the leader in this, maybe not with those words, but in, in action, like you, you're leading us here and then it needs to be collectively endorsed. And there's some beautiful work on this sort of um, way of thinking about leadership as this very interactive kind of phenomenon. And and that's what makes it a really hard thing to research because it happens between people. It's like this kind of black box that we, we every time we go to research it, it almost evaporates, like it's really hard. So I think this, this clip just kind of is a, is a nice little... Um, lab of us kind of being able to kind of pinpoint how these things are happening and how people resist and push back and then create new things about talking about leadership. To listen to the full conversation, join us on SoundCloud, iTunes or Stitcher. For extra notes and community support, join our Facebook group today. This show is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators, podcasts by educators. To learn more, visit edupodcastnetwork.com.